Hello and welcome to the Dreaming and Doing podcast with me, Nikki Raby. I'm an actor, coach, writer, speaker, podcaster and a mum. And in my coaching work, I work with creatives, personal brands, freelancers and small businesses. In my podcast, I talk about success, but not in a traditional sense. I have conversations with those who have built a business from something they love or who have made a pivot in their career. Also those who have built a brand or a job that maybe didn't exist when they were at school and they found a way to monetize their skills, talents and expertise. I've spoken to loads of incredible people, coaches, designers, journalists, app creators, magazine editors, bloggers, content creators, authors, and all round movers and shakers. I asked the questions that you want to know the answer to. So how they started, about money, saying no, saying yes, pitching, presenting, putting yourself out there, even though it terrifies you standing out in a busy online world, growing, scaling, and making your work work for you and your circumstances. The show notes are always at nikkiraby.com forward slash podcast, and the conversation continues across social media, often on Instagram, my favorite platform, at Nikki Raby. Thanks so much for listening. It's great to have you with us. In today's episode, I'm talking to Tahira, who is a makeup artist. She works in the beauty industry and has done for many years, but also has carved out this lovely niche for herself in working with green beauty that really aligns with her own personal values as well. She has the most wonderful Instagram stories where she shares products and tips and how to maintain your skin and be the best that you can be and look the best and all of that good stuff. So go and check her out over there as always all of the links are in the show notes and underneath the episode also I wanted to talk to her about freelance life how you pitch how you put yourself out out there how you go for opportunities even though you might feel like you're not ready or you're not quite there yet but being bold being confident and basically faking it until you make it as always please come over to instagram at nikki raby or to the show notes nikkiraby.com forward slash podcast and if you're enjoying the episode i would love it if you rate review subscribe over on itunes because it helps more people out there to come and find these lovely episodes here it is i hope you enjoy and i look forward to hearing your thoughts Tahira, welcome to the podcast, Take Two. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, thank you for having me, and uh, technical errors go away. Oh, exactly, exactly, and I think this is good for you guys to know that, yeah, we're in, like, episode 70 now, but sometimes technology is just not your friend. Um, let's start with you. What do you do? What's your job? So um, my job is probably quite multifaceted. Faceted. Um, I'm a makeup artist by training and by trade. I, I um, have been a makeup and hair designer for film and television. I now work more in more photo shoots and kind of commercial and advertising and campaigns and on individuals. But my focus now and certainly for the last five years has been um, I'm going to now call it conscious beauty because green beauty and clean beauty are all getting a bit slurried and marred. So basically, my, my focus is um, beauty and makeup that is done in a more conscientious way for the sort of planet and the people and the animals and the plants and all of that stuff. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. And it's certainly something that I've been looking at into because I guess certainly it, we have seen that wave of um being much more conscious about what's going into our bodies and on our skin and all of these things but yeah i'm sure we'll get into that later how did it start for you of um training in this industry so well, some might argue uh, my parents probably that i've been doing it since i was three <laughs> i mean i've got some pictures where i'm i've got literally pictures of me holding i think my uh, godmother's makeup kit and putting it on myself and putting it on her and my mum. uh it, it, it literally i have wanted to do this since i was nine and i i didn't realize i spent my 20s trying to figure out what i wanted to do all the while doing it i um 
I took a makeup course at night while I was studying um, in university um, uh, a couple days a week and then moved into salons and then so got trained in salons as a hairdresser as well as so do hair as well uh, but makeup was always my primary focus and then kind of from there uh, landed on a film set one day due to things that were happening and then ended up in film for about 12 to 15 years. Wow. And has that changed since you've had your son? Has kind of the the kind of work that you do or that you're interested in, how how did that change when you became a mum? So it, it trains drastically. Now, in fairness, I, you know, I, I kind of started my career in film and on set when I was about 21, 22. Um, and I still worked in the salon like I've always done a lot of different things at the same time and the one thing uh, that anybody who works in the film or television uh, industry will tell you is that it just it it takes away a lot of your life you know there's (laughs) many many long hours and Uh, it always drives me mad when actors complain like when I'm you know an actor on set and people like oh the hours are so long but it's the makeup and the hair that are there first always well and then there's the facilities guys and the transport guys got all our stuff there in the first place who were even yes. before us you know I mean it's it, it's just long it can be long days and it's, I agree it's not always you know backbreaking work but uh it is long and so having my so I was already a bit fatigued a bit I had traveled a lot um I, I I was very lucky I've had a lovely career and um I traveled a lot and by the time I was you know getting married and kind of even before before I was pregnant it was already starting to lose its luster but yeah. once I became pregnant it it, it it was a bit the sort of the the signal that it was time to sort of maybe make a change and, and not to say I still go back and I still do days on films mainly with friends and stuff and I now can thoroughly enjoy it because for me at the moment it's only a several days at a time it's never a two three four month run you know been there done that bought the t-shirt um so yeah that's, that's, that's great. And how how do you navigate freelance life? Um, because it is it's kind of now painted as like the thing that people um, should do, and it's exciting and flexibility and all that sort of stuff. But it does come with some pitfalls sometimes as well. How's how's that sort of journey been for you? And how have you built this really successful career? Well, one, I appreciate. You calling my career successful because <laughs> I think sitting on the inside of it on some quiet days you just go ah! yeah well also the fact that you're still here you're still doing yeah. it and I feel like I that <laughs> yeah well, I think so many people give up you know sometimes I look around when I go for auditions and I'm like there's nobody here they've all <laughs> they've all retrained or done something else well there's a couple of things one f- freelance life is not for the faint-hearted I've been a freelancer for 20 blah, 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 years of my life, <laughs> and uh, it still takes a lot of uh, uh, juggling, getting used to it. certainly takes a lot of juggling in terms of childcare. There's the just physical logistics of who is going to be where at what time and where does everybody need to be on this day at that time and how do we get everybody there and making sure everybody's fed and clothed yes. and your household is helped and taken care of and then that those costs are covered. So that's one, that's one aspect to it. Um, and it's also, it is the, the freelance life has ebbs and flows. You're only as good as your last job, but you're, you could have been amazing on your last job and maybe they, other people changed and now those other people are hiring someone else and they're just not hiring you anymore. It's tough, especially if you're a creative freelancer. I feel like if you were a freelance accountant, it might be a little bit different because you're like, the numbers are the numbers. Whereas when you're an artist in any form or creative in any form, that day that they don't call you can be like the knife that takes your guts and right. throws them on the floor. But, and makeup is so intimate as well. You know, I've yeah. sat in many makeup chairs where within seven minutes, like you've gone through your life history because there's just something about touching somebody's face and being that close and intimate that you have to sort of, it's its personal, it's emotional. Yeah. I mean, I think I always say this to like sort of my students or young makeup artists. There, there's a couple, there's a lot that you can learn technically, but you're, attitude you kind of have to have it or you have to hone it you have to learn it there has to be uh you have to there's a way of uh, invisibility that you have to have sort of let 
let them not let your presence not be invasive mm -hmm. uh let yourself be kind of molding to your client because it indeed it is very intimate but on the other hand as your career goes on you have to have the strength and the presence of character to stand up for what you think is right or what you believe in or make your views known or make your vision clearly expressed so people can understand what you're trying to achieve and that's a whole other skill set that mm. you kind of as you move through your career you develop yeah I, I really find that as an actor as well that sometimes when you're on set it is that sort of sense of like oh my goodness I can't believe that I'm here that actually that thing that I dreamed up in my head has actually come to reality but it's always yeah you you start to learn you, that confidence of when to speak up or how to how, how to kind of deal with people and you have to have those sort of skills of being instantly sort of familiar with people I guess because you're you're part of a team and a creative vision well I think for what I do uh, one of the big skills you need to have is being able to read the temperature of the room mm. and you, you 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 learn to assess people's personalities or or the mood that they're in very very quickly <laughs> and you have to be able to speak to a, a person hiring you a producer or a creative director who maybe has either a strong vision that you need to follow or a weak vision that you need to guide and but you have to figure that out very quickly um and and uh you know as you go you'll you'll find your teams you'll find the people that you work better with and some days are going to be awesome and some days are kind of not gonna to go so well and you may have your own stuff that's going on in your life that has to be left at the door which is not fair there's a lot of fluidity and flexibility where I feel like people who work in a more constant environment where they're working maybe with the same people even if it's only a couple days a week or whatever there's a certain you know what to expect you yes. kind of it's a little easier I find than um you know, I, you do get that on a film set or a TV set when you're on it full time, however, you know, you get that full time feeling, that team, that family where you know where everybody stands. But uh, yeah, the freelance life, just going back to it, the freelance life is tough, uh, but it's wonderful and it does allow us a certain amount of flexibility. It allows, you know, it's allowed me to have two weeks off this week in the middle of September for no other reason than I needed to sort of settle my son into his first weeks of school so you know that's a, that's a plus that's a bonus that's a wonderful thing yeah definitely how has your um career sort of developed in terms of has it been something that you consciously done of sort of saying right well actually I know lots about this so now I'm available to speak or how was that an organic process um I think yes and no I mean there's a Earlier on in my career, there was a very stumbling element to it. I literally kept stumbling into things. And <laughs> I think I'm a bit of a, I'm a ambitious person in a lazy person's body. So I was like, oh, look, here's an opportunity. I'm going to try and do really well at it. Run, 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 run. Scrabble, scrabble, scrabble. Strive, 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 strive. Ooh, okay, tired now. Oh, look, here's another opportunity. <laughs> scrabble, scrabble, scrabble. And it wasn't necessarily at the driver's seat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas I would say that more... I'd say boss in the eight, last eight, nine years, certainly since I moved to this country or in the short two years, um, I've been here about 12 years, probably about 10 years. I have tried to be a bit more in the driver's seat. And then certainly since my son, I have to make very clear decisions. And the, 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 it's a bit of an evolving, it's not, uh, I'm not there yet. I'm, it's a it's a blob mass of, of ambition or desire or wanting to create a certain uh, set of stuff. Uh, but uh, getting there, and yes, yeah, some of it's organic. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was at a event where Anna from uh, Mother Pucka, we were chatting, and she's like, well, you're a really good communicator. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go with that. And uh, Instagram stories had just launched, and or maybe launched in the time after that. I was like, I know, it's only lasting 24 hours. I'm just going to start talking into my phone like a crazy <laughs> person, and let's see what that does. But two years after talking to my phone like a crazy person, and I'm still kind of trying to hone that and figure it out. My husband had to give me a talking to about my how I speak to my audience the other day. Um, <laughs> you know, because they're watching everything. I didn't realize out. Matt was watching things, but it turns out he was, and now he gives me feedback. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, and, and, and just, uh, you know, I got a gig uh, uh, doing what I like to do, which is talking about beauty, talking about stuff. And, and speaking to human beings. Uh, so, you know, 
yeah, it, 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 there's an organic element of it, but there is a bit of a, okay, you know, I've got the vision board, I've got the uh, idea, I'm going to try and do this, and also an acceptance that I'm going to try to a certain point, and if it's breaking me or feeling unhappy or unrewarding, well, then I'm going to put that to the side and try something else. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, because I think we can all... The one-year plans are lovely, but if by March you're just not feeling it or if it just feels really hard and not in a kind of like, oh, this feels out of my comfort zone so and it's not happening quickly, so I'm going to sort of get cross. But if it's genuinely like, oh, actually, this is not the way that it's supposed to d- to go, then mm. being connected with that really helps to sort of then maneuver it. Yeah, I think because sometimes, I mean, you just you, we both touched briefly on you know, giving up. And I don't, you know, sometimes it's not giving up. It's just moving something aside that may not be working. So it's fullest potential. And maybe it's going to come back, but maybe it's not going to come back. But maybe the way you thought it should be or was going to be is really not how it turned out. And (laughs) actually, so for example, two years ago, two and a half years ago, I started a blog because I had a really quiet moment at work. And I always get asked beauty advice, always. And because I was really wanting to share more of my, uh, kind of knowledge and expertise of using green organic natural conscious beauty as a professional and the results thereof I started the blog and I've got right I'm going to give it two years of really dedicating having a post every week I, you know I did I was changed to my computer changed to my phone I was grumpy all the time because if I had to go to work then I was you know writing at night and stuff like that and you know my son was still only in nursery and there's just some, wasn't enough hours in the day and I was it was too much. I just, mm. I, and then I, you know, by the end, you're just kind of scrabbling to put out content that's just to put it out there. And it's, it was place fillers and um, not necessarily always the best of what I had to offer. So I'm like, okay, well, that, that's got to take a step back. And yeah. so I've, I've put that on hold for now. And I'm not saying it's gone. I just need to maybe figure out a better way to do it or how I'm going to do it or get help to do it, you know? Yeah. Definitely. And I think that just having those checks and balances as you go are, are so essential because it it is a lot and it is a lot when you're raising kids or you're working late or those moments where people say, oh, I'll just do it in the car on, on the way. Like you're tired if you've been up since 4.30 in the morning. It's 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 a full on thing. Um, how did the move into um, green beauty start for you? Because it's still fairly new to the kind of the people that sort of shop at Boots or, you know, we're, we're sort of only learning these things fairly. I mean, you see things like on goop.com and, um, you know, it's still like, whoa, what is this? How, how can there be another way? So for me, it was, it is literally my life. So, um, my kind of more personal story to the kind of green beauty world is very much that ever since I moved out of my parents' house, I've never, ever used a non-eco cleaner ever. I've, in the sort of I'm not I wouldn't call myself an eco warrior but I've certainly been conscious I was uh, petitioning my parents to recycle better when I was 12 (laughs) you know it's always been part and I think that's a Canadian thing as well it's very much part of how we live and how we are and um but in truth for my I never you know my skincare at home for myself I always bought really natural stuff I've been using Dr. Bronner soaps since the late 90s like my life in my personal world has often and always been conscious or conscientious or environmentally friendly on some level. And then leading up to to my pregnancy and having my son, I started kind of realizing there was more and more here because before that it was a bit granola, it was a bit hippy drippy, everything was a bit (laughs) orangey red. And I was like, oh, I'm not interested in that. But for skincare, I've been using kind of organic skincare. I was using Dr. Hauska already sort of mid, uh, late 2000s, you know, um, of working here and stuff like that. So, you know, in terms of skincare, that was easy. That came a long time ago. Yes. The actual makeup uh, definitely happened more. Once I was sort of pregnant and, and just had my baby and was sitting at home, I kind of discovered Instagram. I discovered social media. I haven't, hadn't been on Facebook since 2010 uh, just because I found it really mind-bogglingly weird. Yeah, and, me too. Uh, I discovered these makeup artists, these professional makeup artists, Lou Dartford in particular and Candice in particular, uh, who are now uh, friends and associates, that uh, 
I was like, whoa, wait a minute. If they're doing it, why can't I? I've just been distracted by shiny golden packaging of the big French fashion houses. Like, whoa, there, there is a better way. And, they're do- and it, it looks amazing. What they're doing looks amazing. And I just, I just went face first into it and kind of d- don't look back. And I, I even have a hard time buying straight brands because once in a while I have to buy something from a straight brand uh, because it needs to be really waterproof or last long for a client, you know, whatever red carpet. And, uh, and then I'll just be researching the bejesus out of it and the company and making sure <laughs> I'm buying the right, like I'm exhaust, I exhaust myself. Yeah. Has it um, helped you have that sort of USP in terms of, has it opened new doors because of the way that you work? Absolutely. Yes and no. I mean, I'm still, you know, there's still certain doors that I'm I'm, uh, banging up against. But like I said, I'm an ambitious girl in a lazy girl's body. Um, (laughs) uh, uh, But yeah, it, it has. But I think what I find a bit uh, cringeworthy and makes me kind of go, ooh, is I see a lot of bandwagon jumping and uh, um, sort of like, ooh, this is the catchphrase of the moment. I'm going to use it. Yes. And it's like, well, no, I think, it, again, and this, I'm going to, I hate saying this, but it has to kind of be authentic. I think, it, you know, the, the artist that I see doing the best at it, it is a bit like me in whatever way. It, it's a part of their lives, being conscious about whatever. There's a great artist I look up to a lot. She's called Justine Jenkins. She does a lot of amazing, beautiful work. Oh, I work. know her. She, I love her Justine stuff. Justine is amazing, but she's, and she's very passionate about cruelty-free. She's very passionate about animal um, sort of safeguarding and rights and so on and so forth. And it is, it's not about USP. It's not a business term. It is part of her DNA. Yes. And I think that's like, for me, that's how I feel about it. And I think for whatever it is you do in your life, and preferably it be somewhat ecological on some level, but please, please let it just be part of your life, part of your existence, part of what you believe in, even if it is accounting. If you think people need to do their numbers better and you really believe it and you just that's fine. It just has to be a part of your DNA because if you're trying to wear a mantle of what somebody else is doing, I think that's when people just sniff it on you and it just makes them feel a bit gross. Oh, you're so right. Adrian, um, who's a runner and a oh, jazz. Oh, I love Adrian. Oh, I recorded, um, there's a podcast episode that I recorded with her yesterday and she was saying this sense of fitness and well-being that sometimes people, she's like, I'm a runner, I'm not a yogi, like, let's just stick to that side of things. So mm. even though meditation and yoga is really in and cool right now, like, I'm not going to go off piste and suddenly go yeah I'm just going to show you how I wear my meditation spots because she's like people will yeah like you say will sniff it out and be like uh that's not who you are I mean I think it's always important to kind of learn and evolve and find new spaces to be in or like sometimes I feel a bit like oh I have this really cool because I'm I, I, I like ethical fashion I try to work with ethical fashion brands and I'm like oh am I does people does it look because like I see like say a food blocker or whatever talking about beauty or I see a fashion person talking about beauty and I get a bit like, hey, that's mine. Uh, leave it. <laughs> Don't so, touch. And then, then I'm like, but wait, I've got this great cool jumpsuit that's made out of organic cotton and it's on sale and I want to tell people about it for no other reason than I, I believe in that company. So I think it's okay to vary and change again if it just if it fits. But it, honestly, if there's any iota of you that feels like it's not right, well, then don't do it. But, you know, there are people who evolve and change and then we evolve in terms of what we're interested in. And I'd like to think that people who liked my makeup 10 years ago because of uh, the style of it or whatever it was are not going to think, oh, well, she she moved into green beauty. Well, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like, I think it's okay to change and evolve and find new stuff. But it has to be really connected to you on the inside and all those words are really wanky I'm really sorry and we hear it all the time and I hear it from other people and sometimes I roll my eyes it's like yeah 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 I know I know I know but it's kind of true because every time I try to do something that doesn't kind of that I don't do necessarily well or that is not my best creative self it just falls flat and it just fails miserably and And my body tells me if it's wrong like I feel like I'm really connected with my intuition and my instincts and things like that and there's those moments when I'm in rooms and I'm like 
sweating or I'm mumbling over my words and I'm like, oh, it's because I'm in the wrong room. I shouldn't be doing this and yeah. or I'm not excelling in the way that I kind of want to. Um, I would love to talk to you about how you pitch for work or how you open up that sense of opportunity for yourself. Because um, I know so many of my clients, they sometimes are in that stage of hiding something away for a long time or it's that sense of, well, I've only been doing this for like two years. So like, I'm not at a point where I can chat. And there's a lot of hesitation and a lot of caution around that. Cause I guess it's that thing that we've been talking about it being personal. What's really helped you to kind of get yourself in the room? Um, I think there's uh, okay. So there's a couple of things to that. If I, so last year, or yeah, probably about a year ago, uh, or a year and a half ago, I had this idea to do this thing. And I thought, right, how am I going to do this? And there is that element of, oh, just do it. Put it together. Do it. But I really didn't. <laughs> Put a positive know mindset on. How to, how to do that. So um, there was a bit of help. So uh, first of all, I needed to write a presentation. And so, because I wanted to have in writing a clear plan to someone that I was going to pitch for a clear idea that I'd love them to pay me money for. Yes. So... The first idea was that I was I, I, I was just kind of quietly talking and following my Instagram with who to talk to about it. And I spoke to um, fabulous Lydia Garrett, uh, who's in food, but she, the, she writes a lot of, has to write a lot of stuff for her job and has in the past. She's like, send it over to me. I'll, I'll give it a look-see. And I, sent, I did the whole thing and I sent it to her. She's like, wow, this is really good. I've changed a couple of things about how you should word things. But, you know, that took her all of 10 minutes. Uh, for someone like me reading something like that, it would take me hours. Mm. So asking an expert to help you uh, and, and finding that expert can be hard, but sometimes they're in the most random spot and they're standing next to you. <laughs> that was one thing. The second thing I did was, uh, so this thing I was pitching, I decided to aim small because, first of all, the person I want wanted to work with was a small company and a small brand. And I knew that in my right mind and in my right head, I couldn't actually charge massive amounts of money for it. Not only could she not afford it, but I really couldn't justify it. Mm. So having no sort of uh, very big portfolio behind me to say, look how amazingly valuable I am. Mm. So I went in on a sliding scale and just sort of said, look, let's grow together. I'm going to offer you this, this time, this is what you get. Uh, these are the limited resources I'm going to, uh, these are the limited results I'm going to give you with the limited resources you have. But if you're happy with this, maybe in six months or a year, we can do this again. And next time it'll be a bit more. And next time it'll be a bit more. And that has proven to work very well because everybody's comfortable. Everybody kind of grows together. And, um, so I had to put a team together. People were willing to get on board with that, which I did. So there was a lot of work on my part, but I think I have to say, I do break it down to my folks. You know, they never told me I couldn't do something. Yeah. And uh, I, I know not everybody gets – I've had an amazing upbringing, full of confidence. I have a lot of strong women in my family. I know not everybody has that. And I know it's, it's silly of me to stand here talking about confidence because people think that I walk – I'm, I'm, I'm very happy talking. People think, oh, she's super, super confident. I'm really not. I am a Gemini, I pretend to be confident, and I act confident all the time, <laughs> even if I'm not. I'm, I'm terrible. I'll be crying floods of tears on the inside, but sometimes yeah. it's just, you just have to kind of do it. But there's loads of amazing people like the Step Up Girls and stuff like that can, that can help with that confidence thing of just reaching out to someone and being like, here's a really small pitch. So I think that my advice would be like, if your pitch is small and you want to open a new door... Make sure what you are presenting to someone new is as professional looking and sounding as you can make it look. Like mm. there's tons of advice online on how to write presentations. That's how I found it. I like found a template of how to write a presentation and I followed that. Like there's tons of free information. Then get advice and start small because even that client pays you 50 pounds or $10 or in, in exchanges for you say, I'm going to do this and this and this for you and you can give me two pieces of clothing in return to the value of a hundred dollars which is not a lot of money but that is a start that's a place where you put value on what you did you didn't give it away for free you put a value on it but you're willing to say let's grow together and i think yes. that was that is key however i will say don't sell yourself short if it's a big client 
Find out what the going rate is. Mm. Do Google, you can literally find everything on Google. Find, call your peers, ask them, and then charge what is appropriate for the size you are. Yes, yes, and just charging even something. I mean, there have been times as an actor over the years where I've done free work, and I always just work on that basis that somebody's getting paid, so it may as well yeah. be you. And also, even if it's just something that you're starting with, you're bringing so many other elements to the table as well. Just of you know having those good people in the room. You always see those sort of behind the scenes of um, fashion documentaries. You know, like Alexander McQueen. I, I watched something on him, and he. He's always got kind of his people, those people who are just keep, keeping the vibes high. And it's, you know, those are sort of really sort of key elements as well. And I love the fact that you put a price on it, even if it's small, because the next time you then go and pitch something, there's that sense in your body. Yeah. Of like, oh, I've done this before. It will be, a, it's like doing yoga or something like, oh yeah. yeah, that time where I had to go upside down. It's okay. I've done a little bit of this before. The one thing I'll say is portfolio pieces. So I still, 20, I've been doing my job, I'm going to say it now, I've been doing my job for 23 years. I still do shoots as often as I can for free, for images, for my book, for my Instagram, for myself as a makeup test, to test out new products or whatever, because that is a crucial part of me having clients and clientele. And the only thing that has changed over the years is that I, I, I am very selective about who I do these uh, yes. freebie jobs with. I, they have to fit in into the certain time, and I have to get something out of it, which is, in my case, a great image. Um, even if it's just one, uh, that's, you know, I really... That, and so say you're a graphic designer, you need to have portfolio pieces. So, you know, even um, if you design a logo for a friend or a neighbor or a family member, and that becomes a portfolio piece, you know... What, for portfolio work, especially in the creative industries, you need to have it. People need to see your work. People need yes. to know visually what you can do and that you might have to do for free. And that but, sense of being able to deliver, actually come up with the finished goods. Like I, I say it sometimes if I do talks for actors that you can do all that hustle all you like, but you've got to have the backing dancers to like show yeah. what you can do. Because people a lot, you know, I'm going to do this or I'm, I'm talking about this or I'm thinking about this. And I always talk about this friend of Matt's who I think for 11 years, he's been writing his film. <laughs> he's still yeah. writing this bloody film. And I'm like, but where's the film? Because it's just always, he. I think he enjoys the dream of it more than the actual producing of it. Well, there's that. I mean, I've had this one idea that I have had carried for probably 11, 12 years myself, and I still haven't done much better, or I've had spurts where I do something about it. And then sometimes just uh, either life or other more urgent dreams take over. Um, and, and yeah, and either I'll get to it or I won't, or it'll morph into something else. I don't. I don't really know, but yeah, I totally get that. Yeah, and technology um, will change. And it's so funny what you said about the Gemini. Matt is a Gemini as well, and sometimes it's, he's all about the the party and being out there. And then sometimes he just needs to sit in his dressing gown in his chair and have a quiet moment. Yeah, no, for sure, <laughs> for sure. I mean, sometimes in life you need to go into child's pose. Yeah. Just, just, in the middle of the, the street whilst your child is kicking off or something. Yeah, yeah that's, for sure. that's usually the best time. Um, where would you like to be in five years' time? Well, I was hoping to still be in Europe, but that doesn't look like it's happening. Right. Um, um, oh, that's a big one. I mean, uh, well, a lot of places. Um, I suppose I have a very clear, right now, clear mind of what I'd like, my, my, the makeup I would like to be doing. I'm very focused on a certain aspect of my um, makeup, which I'd really like to do more of and, um, and would enjoy doing that. Um, I would like to have a shed at the bottom of the garden that is my office and studio and atelier <laughs> so I can take all my pictures and makeup and stick everything on the walls and put it all where I am and not have to hide it away. Um, I would like to have um, be seen as some a go-to person for... Um, perhaps, you know, advice or panel speaking um, or, you know, uh, quotes or, you know, that kind of person, like to be considered in my niche, in my world, a bit of a beauty expert, for lack of a better term, definitely not a beauty guru, because I think that word is so absurd. <laughs> yes. anyway. um, and also, I would like to be balanced and happy. I'd like to be 
fit. I'd like the cellulite to get off the front of my thighs and get back to <laughs> yoga. Uh, I have no problem with cellulite. It's just that I'd like to get back to yoga, which I haven't for six months. So I'm gonna. That's where I'd like to be doing. And um, I'd like to feel that there's still some areas of my life to strive for because I think I'm a striver by nature. But I'd like to feel balanced and happy and have a kid who is balanced and happy and doesn't hate me <laughs> these are goals <laughs> oh my god i'm dreading that day where he says no we don't hug anymore or like mom can you just not do that i mean i had a little taste of it the other day when i was raving in the kitchen and he just looks at me like no no this is this is not all right mom <laughs> yeah but no, I feel it's all to come. But um, if people want to come and find you and see what you're up to, where shall they go? Please visit me on Instagram. That is literally the best place to find me and my story. So I am um, at Beauty by Tahira UK because uh, Beauty by Tahira was already taken up. Uh, so that's the best place to find me. My blog is beautybytahira.com. If you'd like to see my portfolio and see my work, that's tahiramakeup.com. Uh, and I do have Twitter, and I kind of am a little bit on Facebook, but you know, you can find me there. On Twitter, I tend to actually more repost really interesting stuff I'm reading from other people in my sort of green beauty world. So there'll be a lot of um, links to other people's articles where you can find out a lot of other products and stuff I love. And uh, yeah. Amazing. Come see me on videos. Yeah, because, and uh, I love, I absolutely love your stories, and I do certainly oh, feel thanks. like, think, oh, since, um, I mean, I'm pale and ginger, and was, as soon as I came into the world, the midwife was saying to my mum, who is very olive skin, like, you've got to watch this kid's skin because she'll burn just by looking at the sun. So I'm very kind of aware of that, and I, I love the fact that now there is stuff that, um, and the way that you present it as well, it just gives me so many ideas because my skin has really changed since becoming a mum and um, I just have to I mean you know I can see 40 so like it yeah, yeah things are changing and you got to roll with it yeah oh thank you so much that's so kind well I do and I, I I really do love sharing my knowledge I really don't I'm not one of those people that holds it and keep secret like if you want to know I'll tell you so <laughs> send me a message ask me a question or sometimes once in a while if I, I know I've got a quieter week maybe I'll do it today I'll say you know that you know that new sticker on Instagram stories where I say ask me anything about green beauty um, yeah. yeah absolutely I'm always and, and just if I do delay in getting back to you please bear with me and feel free to send me a message of some kind uh, but because sometimes I do miss stuff but yeah no I'm, I, I love I love sharing with people and everybody's like we want to see more of this and more of that and um, so I'm trying I just Give me a month to get the kids settled into school, and then hopefully I'll have a bit more time to to re resume my career as a as definitely. A and that is equally is an important job as well. You know these, and I'm learning all the time with my kid. It's like these things take time. They're not something you can just quickly tick off the list. It's um. It's a holistic learning working pro process for sure. But um, thank you so much. I've learned so much today and I love what you said. Um, yeah, just about how you navigate things. And I know so many people will find it useful. So thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. And thank you so much. And I wish everybody a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks. And thank you for having me, Nick. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it and I would love to hear what you thought of the episode and share any takeaways with me. Come and find me across social media at Nikki Raby or you can visit the podcast page nikkiraby.com forward slash podcast. <laughs>